In much of Kentucky, it has become an all too often emergency call for first responders, drug overdoses. Some people can be saved, but others are found too late. For two central Kentucky coroners, a county line separates them, but lately their problems are becoming one. WKYT's Miranda Combs investigates. Sometimes looks can be deceiving. In a quiet place of after school birthday parties, sitting benches, and laid back lifestyles, there's a deadly enemy moving in. I'm afraid of what's going to happen to our county. For someone that's been coroner in this county for 14 years, this is new to him. It's coming. And I need to be expecting it. So far this year, he's had three, two in one day. One heroin, the other two were fentanyl and morphine. However, coroner Daryl Hodge says they thought they were getting heroin. But I actually uh, was looking, checking into getting more body bags, you know, um, because I don't know what I'm going to have to face over the next coming months and years. Because down this road, across the county line, this same story has been going on for several years now. Recently, we found one in the bathroom that if you'd walked by and just glanced in, you would have thought he was just in the bathroom, but he was dead. They call it the heroin slump, dead with a needle still in their arm. Already this year, a county with about 85,000 people has already had 18 overdose deaths. What does this mean to you? It means we got a problem. It means we're losing a generation is exactly what it means. But instead of collecting the bodies and adding up the numbers, he and the Madison County Drug Task Force are fighting back. I'm the coroner of Madison County. If I rule the autopsy, I don't care who's sitting where. Okay? He says autopsies are the answer when dealing with overdose deaths because prosecutors need to prove beyond a doubt that drugs caused the death. Can you, beyond the shadow of a doubt, tell me 100% that killed them, or did they have a heart attack? Or did they have a pulmonary embolism? Can you tell me that? Well, my answer is no. Okay? It's no. So now it's yes, I can, because somebody smarter than me has done an autopsy on this person. As overdose deaths continue to creep across this county line, the corners on both sides of this line agree that overdose deaths need to be treated as crime scenes. But we've done stories in the past where corners don't always agree on that issue. Some say autopsies on overdose deaths are unnecessary and many times unwarranted. It's important now that we collect the telephones, uh, we collect any evidence around there because. If, if you do a death on Tuesday and do a death on Thursday and you look at both of them's cell phone and they both got the same number on there, well, who, who's that Jay Bird? Probably the one that's selling it to them. Back in Garrett County, the coroner is learning this new way of coroner investigations. He says sending possible overdose deaths for autopsy is a cost to his county, but worth the price. I dread that so bad. Because I, I mean, I, I really do believe in my heart that I'm going to see more deaths. Not only are the number of overdose deaths increasing in those counties, at the same time, the number of people they are saving with Narcan is increasing too. Narcan reverses the effects of an overdose. Madison County EMS used Narcan 404 times last year. That's almost double the amount of doses they used in 2014. Gosh, that is so many. But interesting enough, the number of doses doesn't always correspond with the number of patients. Because it's taking more doses now to keep these people alive because they're mixing it with fentanyl, more morphine, so it's just more deadly. It's okay. not a city problem moving into rural areas just like these communities. Absolutely. Right. Thank mm -hmm. you, Miranda.